The recent Dead by Daylight PTB has been one of the most controversial updates in Dead by Daylight's history. It has been a while since I've seen such backlash over an update. But is this update really that bad? After playing it for myself, there are definitely some changes that I believe miss the mark, but there are also a good few that I believe are beneficial to the game. In this video, I'm going to go over each change, talk about if they're good or bad, and what I would do to change them. This is how I would fix the 6.7.0 mid-chapter. Let's first start off with the visual heartbeat change. This displays a visual indicator for survivors being affected by a terror radius or a lullaby. It can be toggled on and off in the accessibility tab of the settings. This change is just straight up net positive. Accessibility changes are always welcome. Plus this change would allow you to play the game while listening to some tunes without the risk of being snuck up on. I think this change is great and needs no major changes. Now let's talk about the blood web improvements. Some changes were made to the blood webs to make spending blood points much easier. These changes include, you can claim notes now by pressing on them rather than holding down on them. This can be switched back to holding down if you wish. You can click on any unpurchasable node to automatically buy all the nodes that lead to it. After reaching Prestige 1, you can press a button at the center of the blood web to automatically purchase the whole web. Overall, these changes are very good and make spending blood points much less of a chore. If I was to change anything about these changes, I would make it so you only have to reach Prestige 1 on one character to unlock the ability to automatically buy blood webs. With 36 survivors and 31 killers, with the current restriction, you'll have to prestige 67 times in order to unlock this ability on everyone. I would also increase the speed at which the blood web is automatically purchased, so we can level up even faster. Now let's talk about the map changes. Blood Lodge and Auto Haven Wreckers have had their layouts slightly changed. In first impressions, I enjoy these new layouts. Blood Lodge feels smaller and because the lodge is more central to the map, it feels less flat and it's harder to see the killer from halfway across the map. I also enjoy the car walls being split up on Auto Haven Wreckers, as it makes traversing the map much easier. The one thing I don't really like is that one of the breakable walls is missing from the main building. This makes the garage much less tense. Before I liked this spot, because it was suspenseful working on a gen here because there's only one way out. I hope they don't keep this wall removed and revert it to how it was. Now let's go over the removal of unique light interactions with some killers. Unique flashlight killer interactions were removed from a few killers. These killers include Wraith, Hag, Nurse, Artist and Spirit. I'm a bit mixed on this change. Personally, I liked how the flashlight could have unique effects with killer powers. It was something cool that I thought you could learn and it made an item that isn't insanely strong a bit stronger. On the other hand, I do understand that they don't want some killers to be fully countered by an item while other killers aren't. Personally, I would have preferred if they went the other direction, by giving killers who don't have unique light interactions, interactions with flashlights. I feel like this would have made flashlights a bit more fun. Let me know what you think about this change in the comments. Now let's go over the add-on changes for some killers. The Clown, Oni, Pig, Freddy and Pyramid Head all had one or two of their add-ons slightly changed. To be honest, these changes are so minor that they'll probably go unnoticed. I'm kinda neutral on these changes, they're neither good nor bad, just there. Now we can go over the changes made to Billy and his add-ons. First of all they changed how Billy's chainsaw overheats. You generate less heat while starting to rev and revving your chainsaw. You generate more heat during the sprint. This means you can use the chainsaw more in chase but it is slightly worse for travelling. Overall I like this overheat change. When testing them, I was using the chainsaw like mad and I never overheated. Though I do still think the overheat mechanic should be reserved for adding anti-camp to Billy's kit. For example, your chainsaw will overheat quickly if you rev the chainsaw near Huck Survivor. But I'm fine with these overheat changes. They help make Billy feel more like he did before they nerfed him. Next, let's go over his engraving nerfs. The engraving add-ons increase the speed of Billy's chainsaw while also increasing the charge time. With this update, not only did they nerf the speed boost they gave, but they also increased the charge time penalty. This change is bad. Billy's engraving add-ons were his most fun add-ons and they were also pretty balanced. These add-ons were more than likely nerfed because they were used much more than all his other add-ons. The problem is, these add-ons weren't used because they were OP, but because they were fun and because all of Billy's other add-ons are bad. There are two things I believe behavior should do instead of just nerfing his engravings. Number one, give Billy an add-on pass. He has some of the worst add-ons in the game, so it's no wonder why people gravitate to the only decent ones. Number 2. Revert the charge time nerf to engravings, keep the speed increase nerf, but increase Billy's base kit chainsaw speed. This would make it so the engraving add-ons aren't as necessary, but they can still be enjoyed by those who want to use them. So if you ran the engravings, you would still go the same speed as before. Now let's go over the various perk changes. Gearhead was changed so it now works like this. After a survivor loses a health state by any means, Gearhead activates for 30 seconds. While Gearhead is active, every time a survivor performs a good skill check while repairing, their aura is revealed to you for 6, 7 or 8 seconds. Overall, I think this change is good. When I was playing it and testing with it, I actually did get some value of it. While this perk mightn't be meta, I can definitely see it making its way into some players' builds. Overzealous was changed to work like this. 
After cleansing or blessing any totem, this perk activates. Your generator speed is increased by 8, 9 or 10%. This bonus is doubled if you cleanse or bless a totem. This perk deactivates when you lose a health state by any means. This is a nice buff and will make it synergize much better with boons, or you might see it a bit more often. There's nothing I'd change about this buff. Overcharge was changed to work like this. You can overcharge a generator by performing the damage generator action. Next survivor interacting with the generator is faced with a difficult skill check. Failing the skill check will result in additional 2, 3 or 4% loss of progress. Succeeding the skill check grants no progress but prevents the generator explosion. After overcharge is applied to a gen, its regression speed increases from 85% of the normal to 130% of the normal over the next 30 seconds. This was a needed nerf as overcharge allowed for tree gens which is just a boring strategy for both sides. Because of that reason I do think it's a good change. I think it might be a bit too early to tell if it's over nerfed, I just hope it's still usable. Call of Brian now works like this. After kicking a generator, this perk activates for 60 seconds. The generator regresses at a 115, 120 or 125 percent of the normal regression speed, and you can see its aura in yellow. Each time a survivor completes a good skill check on a generator affected by this perk, you receive a loud noise notification. The nerf was needed for the same reason as overcharge because it enabled tree gen strategies, which again is unfun for both sides. But I do think it was slightly over nerfed. The regression is borderline useless now. Unfortunately, I'm unsure how to make it more balanced without it becoming a problem again. I tried to buff the info part of the perk, but I'm unsure how to change it without it basically copying another perk. If you have any idea on how you would train Colibrine, please leave a comment below. Circle of Healing now works like this. Any survivors within the Boon Totem's range gain a 40, 45 or 50% healing speed bonus to healing others. Mechids do not stack with this boon. Injured survivors have their auras revealed to all other survivors when inside the Boon Totem's range. This change was needed. Every other boon needs the killer to be near it for it to benefit the survivor. Circle of Healing doesn't. It would leave killers in situations where they couldn't snuff the boons because it would waste way too much time. While it can still be used when it's far away from the killer, two survivors have to travel there to heal which mightn't even save them time in the long run. This means the perk is better used in easy to access areas, which makes it more feasible for the killer to snuff it. Now the killer can actually decide whether to snuff the boon or not, rather than knowing it would be a waste of the time. For these reasons, I think this is a good change. I also enjoy the new aura effect it gives. I wouldn't alter this change. Pain Resonance now works like this. You start the trial with 4 tokens. The first time each survivor is hooked in the Scourge Hook, you lose 1 token and the generator with the most progress explodes instantly losing 10, 15 or 20% progress and will start to regress. Once you have no tokens, Pain Resonance deactivates for the rest of the trial. I do like what they're going for with this change. This perk could be frustrating when you're on one side of the map the killer continues to tunnel and hook one survivor repeatedly, making you lose 45% of a gen without even being within the heartbeat range of the killer. While this change fixes this, I hope it's not too strong of a nerf. This perk went from being able to have 180% total regress to 60% regress. Maybe they should slightly increase the amount to like 20% to slightly compensate. I do also like the fact now that the killer has to decide if using a token is worth it, so they'll have to decide between using a scourge hook and a normal hook if they think maybe no gents have been worked on recently. Overall I do like this change, I'm just hoping the nerf isn't too bad. Deadheart now works like this. Deadheart activates after you've unhooked a survivor safely or unhooked yourself. Press the active ability 1 while running to gain the endurance status effect for next half second. This causes the exhausted side effects for 60, 50 or 40 seconds. Deadheart then deactivates. Like Pain Res, I do like what they are going for with this change. The worst bit about Deadheart is having to assume every single injured survivor has it, which does get tiring. Not being able to lunge his killer isn't very fun. With this change, you'll be able to predict when a survivor may have it, so you'll only have to bait them out then. This makes the perk much less tedious to go against. For this reason, I think it's a good change, and I hope we'll see different survivor perks being used. There is one problem I have with it though. I believe the perk should only deactivate after it has successfully blocked a hit. Deactivating after every use seems a little overkill to me. Finally, we can go over the elephant in the room, the healing and medkit changes. Base healing was increased from 16 seconds to 24 seconds. Across the board, medkits have had their altruistic healing times reduced. They no longer increase the speed of self-healing and only have enough charges to heal a survivor once. While the intent behind these changes are good, they are ultimately very bad. Let me explain. Medkits are the best item in Dead by Daylight. The amount of time saved from medkits is far greater than every other item. What makes them so strong is the ability to allow survivors to heal themselves. What would usually take 2 survivors 16 seconds to heal, now only takes 1 survivor to spend 16 seconds. This saves 16 seconds and that doesn't even factor in the time needed for the 2 survivors to find each other. In order to truly nerf medkits, you need to nerf self healing. The problem with these changes is they actually buff self healing in a way. Instead of saving 16 seconds, you save 24 seconds self healing. 
I think Behavior missed what was truly strong with healing, because while they did nerf the medkit charges and self-healing bonuses, which is good, they needlessly nerfed altruistic healing. Fortunately, I think these changes can be fixed to make some truly good changes. First of all, revert altruistic healing to 16 seconds. Self-healing can stay 24 seconds. Second, I would increase all medkits to 32 charges, but self-healing would consume them at a rate of 1.3 charges per second. Let me explain. This would make it so a medkit can either heal another survivor twice, or they can use the self-heal once. This would hopefully make it so that healing other survivors with a medkit is actually viable, instead of the only optimal option being to use it for a self-heal. I'll also quickly mention that recovery speed would also be reverted if the altruistic healing speed was reverted. That concludes all I'd like to say about the mid-chapter. Despite how much backlash this update has received, I do truly believe it could be a great update if they just change some things slightly, mainly the billion altruistic healing nerfs. If you have anything you'd like to add, please leave a comment down below. I'd like to thank you for making this far and I hope you enjoyed your time. If you liked this video, you may enjoy some of my other videos. Currently, only 18.5% of people who watch my videos are subscribed, so if you're not subscribed and you'd like to see more videos like this, I'd ask that you do subscribe. If you'd like to see behind the scenes of my videos or updates about upcoming videos, you can follow me on Twitter. That's all for now. Thank you, and goodbye.